Spirituality as a whole program must also self-destruct for you to return to the natural state. That's right. That's a good segue into jumping into the stages. That is, as Frank just described to you, in these short stages, that is this fifth stage, transcending the entire paradigm of spirituality itself, that very natty state, the natural state. So we'll go ahead and pull up towards this long definition of the stages first and a brief entry into that. We're just going to mention that each stage has three levels. There's the more intellectual, there's the experiential, and the realized. And it's important to be sincere and honest with which level you are at with each stage. So let's go ahead and have Frank kick us off with the stages defined long. Okay, let's do it. So um, before I go into the stages, I just want to remind people that all those stages are just references. Uh, just like the quote that I read, nothing can, no labels can touch this. Um, but during the path, it's very valuable to have stages. It, I mean, it helped myself and a lot of other people. And if you look at a lot of different research about the different stages of waking that actually people go through, like worship Jeffrey Martin, or even the Theravada four path model, or the, the models that are you know uh, advocated by people like Daniel Ingram, or whatever tradition that you're in, there's always going to be some kind of stages in there, except for the really radical non-dual teachers. But Usually, people do go through different stages of unfoldment. And uh, the stage where we're going to talk about, if you really want to match it, you can match it to any school, any tradition, and it will make sense. Uh, stage number one is ego state, stage of separation. Basically, you're identifying yourself with this character inside the Mitsu. Your sense of identity, your sense of self, is behind the eyes, inside the head, or somewhere in the Mitsu. You're contracted, you're separated from the rest of the environment. There's a huge gap between the subject and the object. Okay, second stage, you have the awareness and consciousness phase. This is where I would say 95% of mainstream spiritual teachers talk about. They tell you to abide in awareness. They tell you that your true self is awareness or abide in consciousness or witness observer, whatever. The reason for that is because after you see through that the ego is an illusion, that it's just a fabrication, you have to move your sense of identity to a larger ground after you have more spiritual openings and glimpses. And then you sort of disidentify from the ego and now your identification is with this new ground of awareness and consciousness. Now this is a very vast, infinite, spacious field almost, but there's still an observer here. There's still someone that's observing the ego. And the next step is to unplug even that, to dissolve even the observer, to be aware of awareness, to witness the witness, observe the observer. And if you can witness anything or observe anything, you can still disidentify from it. You can still objectify it. And you realize that the observer is just actually more solidified sensations in the field of experience that's taking credit for nature or the universe. At first, it was the ego taking credit for it. You have this huge block of solidity, like a marble, taking credit, trying to take credit for infinity. And then awareness trying to take credit for infinity. So now your new identification is awareness. And the reason people ask you to abide awareness is not this is a very important point. It's not to create a new identity out of awareness and be like, I am awareness. I mean, that is a better, more spacious identity than the ego, but it's still an identity. After you unplug even awareness, you dissolve even the observer, you move into the third stage, which is what I call the, the God stage. Uh, this is the infinity stage, you know, the creator, being, Christ consciousness, Atman, big self, true self, love, existence. The universal mind and this third stage is what i call the pinnacle of spirituality the pinnacle of spiritual experiences anyway maybe not the pinnacle of spirituality but the pinnacle of human and spiritual experiences and a lot of people think this is it 
which it could be. I mean, every stage is complete in and of itself. Don't get me wrong. Every single stage, every aspect of the jewel, the multiplicity of jewel of enlightenment is complete. So we're not really making a hierarchy. It's more like horizontal. Anyway, at the, at the third stage, we identify with the Godhead, with the universal mind. But there is still a very subtle, very subtle identification. Because even at this point, at this stage, the separation hasn't been completely dissolved. So you feel like you're merging with the divine. As long as there's merging, there's still a very subtle sense of duality. So that's why I want to make a very clear distinction between you as a separate uh, person experiencing the divine versus just the divine recognizing itself. Universe fucking itself versus you trying to fuck the universe. There is a big distinction there. Anyway, so after the third stage, we move on to nothingness. After expansion, what do we get? We get contraction. This whole process is about expansion and contraction. After you expand to infinity, you shrink down from the big bang to the big crunch, down to the singularity of nothingness, emptiness, nirvana, non-being, or Brahman, death, non-existence. So basically, three and four are two sides of the same coin. So at this phase, um, you have this very nebulous sense of self, total loss of identity. Where the third stage, you go around saying, hey, I am God. And the second stage, you're hey, bro, I'm consciousness. Don't you get it? I am to spirituality, I am consciousness. And the third stage, you, I support consciousness. Now I'm God. <laughs> and the fourth stage, you, there's nothing like you said. You said, hey, I, no, I don't I even know what I'm anymore. Total loss of identity. You have this really vague, nebulous sense of self that you can't define at all. And this is kind of like the stuff that Buddha talks about, uh, the emptiness, the originations, where you disidentify from even um, God consciousness. Because if you can be aware of God consciousness, if you can experience God consciousness, it's still an object within your field of experience that you can still disidentify and objectify and make it not self and not this, not that. So we're doing self-inquiry along the way, right? Um, and after this phase, you slip into the natural state. Now, this is very, very tricky because stage three and four, a lot of people would get stuck in a stage thinking this is it, which again, I completely understand because I've been there. And again, each stage is complete, but there's more to the picture. There's more to the facet, different jewels of enlightenment. The nothingness phase, um, if you can still experience this very subtle sense of loss, sense of self, so to speak, there's still an experience there. If there is an experience, you can still witness it and objectify from it. And after you disidentify and disembed all the previous stages, spontaneously you move to this fifth stage, what I call true no self or the natural state, the Tao. So this stage not only transcends all the other stages, it includes them as well, because the only way to truly embody something is to disidentify from it. If you let go of it, it becomes yours even more fully. And all the previous stages, all the experiences, all the mind-blowing experiences you had, that can be experienced even more fully, paradoxically, without the experiencer in the middle. And this is the whole process, is to dissolve the center point. If you want to boil this down to the, I guess, the microscopic level, it's all about dissolving sensations. And the last piece of sensation to get dissolved from solidity to emptiness it's usually somewhere in the center, in the head. Before it was in the body, but then you keep shedding, 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 and then it was in the head. And even if this last little bit of speck of sensation is as tiny as an atom, it's still going to project itself onto a new ground. And the smaller this atom is, the bigger this ground is. And to get to a natural state, you have to dissolve not just the ego, but the background as well. The background that gets created from the separate state and say, oh, even though my identity is this tiny little thing here that I can't even find in the middle of my experience, that's still gonna kind of hang on to some sort of a ground, some sort of a source like Brahman or like Godhead. And very subtly, you're still gonna think, hey, I am Brahman or I am Godhead. This is just the Godhead. This is why Idea Shante um, said that, uh, not, not Idea Shante, we'll get to Idea Shante later, but this is what I said. <laughs> If realizing true self 
of no self is like perceiving the world without the eyeball because the eyeball can't see itself but you can see everything else so if you really truly recognize no self you're not going to be able to experience or even see the no self if you still have the sense of oh i'm looking for the self but i can't find it oh it's infinite that's still not true no self there's true no self there's nothing you can say about it but the eyeball that nothing can be said about can see things and the manifestation of this, what it sees, you can describe, and there's infinite uh, levels to the manifestation. Um, if that's finding out your true self, uh, an eyeball that can't see itself, another analogy that's similar is a mirror versus no mirror. First, you have a source. You perceive the world as Phenomena is arising and passing out of a mirror. The mirror could be any ground that you encounter in the path, it could be consciousness or awareness or the God mind. But after you truly dissolve separation, if the ego is gone, so is the so is the mirror, so is the sword, so is the ground. So you have to deconstruct even the background. You have to do self-inquiry with the self, the small self, the ego, and then you have to do self-inquiry with the big self. You have to do self-inquiry with the God mind. But to do that, you first have to access the God mind. You have to access and identify with something before you can disidentify from it. So all this, that's why all these different paths have to be sort of go through. You go through each one of them, and then you disidentify from them. But by disidentifying from them, you actually disappear into them. And if you disappear into them, you actually manifest them even more fully. So they're only reflections, but no mirror at the end. There's only a manifestation. There's no unmanifested. There's no source, no background. The unmanifested is just something that you imagine. Because how can there be something that's unmanifested if it's non-duality? If this is one thing, right? There's only the manifested. There's no mirror. That's the answer to the Zen koan. What is the sound of one hand clapping? That's that. That's the answer to that koan. <laughs> there's actually this Zen master or maybe he, I think he was reading some uh, some poem or some koan that his student wrote. At first, his student was writing about, oh man, the mind is like a mirror. I have to shine the mirror. And everything is just coming in and out of this Buddha mind, this natural mind. But then after that, he realizes, wait a second, this mirror, this Buddha mind is also just a construction. And then he said, there's no mirror. <laughs> is that fucked up? <laughs> okay, that was a little. Thank you. There we go. Thank you. A little presentation. All right, before before we go on, I just want to say one more thing. Mm -hmm. If you find the stage the stage is very complicated, just remember one thing. This whole spiritual path is about one thing: the solution of the conditions that makes up the separate self. The more you dissolve, the more glimpses of reality, which is formless, gets opened up. And all those mystical experiences that you experience are just a byproduct of. This realization itself is not an experience. And the separate self both disappear. Without the subject, there won't be an object. Even the object that is God consciousness eventually dissolves. And there's just this. <laughs> the absolute normie. <laughs> now you're free to put on different lenses of perception as you see fit. Yeah, so basically the entire spiritual path, if you find this whole map too complex, just remember that the whole process is the solution of the separate self in its condition. That's it. The more you dissolve, the bigger opening you're going to get. That's why the stages of awareness and God and nothingness, whatever, right? Um, so if the separation is completely dissolved, when the subject in the center is completely vanished, so is the background. The background is also going to vanish. So it's not like there is really ultimately no difference between ego, awareness, infinity, and it's all the same. They're just different with configuration and solidity of sensations, which we're going to talk about in a bit what sensations are. But perfect. Yeah.